What's up everyone, it's your soul, and just found this interesting story on an independent related site, independent newspaper. Very, very interesting. This is really lifting the lid on a big part of how we've come to be in a situation where someone like Jeffrey Epstein can be so connected to world leaders and a variety of billionaires and so on, huge list of the world's most famous people, basically. Be a child abuser, be surrounded by other child abusers connected into royalty and so on, how that can all be going on without any kind of resistance to it from mainstream corporations, government, and so on. People might think, well, we voted in this politician, we voted in our politician, it's important that we vote and we go to all these political discussions and so on because we need to get the right person into power for us. They're going to do the right thing. Yet somehow, no matter what happens, we seem to always find that these billionaires and so on are just like, you know, so many other people that have come before them, power monger types, really acting above the law with police and so on, really either ignoring them or they get let off when they do get caught, as happened with Jeffrey Epstein in the, pre in the past and generally happens with wealthy people in general. They don't generally get such a hard time in, in prison. So this is... A story about Eton College in England. Now, Eton is what you might call the most elite college in Britain. It's a very expensive school, effectively, which is meant to only take the wealthiest slash most intelligent people. And they get an education there, which obviously I haven't been there, so I can tell you exactly what happens there. But based on what I do know, they get an education which is very different to the one which the average person is going to get from a state school or even most other private schools. They've just got such a massive resource of teachers and material from which to learn which the average person never even comes close to having access to or maybe doesn't even know exists. What's repeatedly been said is that children that get taught at Eton then go on often to be basically groomed to be CEOs of major corporations, they lead governments, armies, that kind of thing. They're basically set off from the beginning to be effectively the top level of society and maybe that's because they were from a wealthy family that was going to put them there anyway, or maybe it's because the school effectively gave them that leg up. But what's very important here is that what they've actually highlighted is, if we scroll down, someone found an exam paper, which is on Eton's own website, which we'll look at in a moment, which literally shows you how they appear to be thinking in a way that assesses children based on their level of psychopathy, let's say, and their level of uh, intent to be placing themselves mentally and psychologically in a group that's above most other people on the planet. In other words, uh, setting them up to be rulers, or at least assessing how they would think as a ruler. The paper from the 2011 King's Scholarship Examination ex imagines riots on the streets of London in 2040 after an oil crisis in the Middle East causes Britain to run out of petrol. In the scenario, the government deploys the army to stop the riots and succeeds, killing 25 protesters in the process of subduing the discontent. The prospective students of Eton are then asked to imagine they are the Prime Minister and write a speech to explain how they would convince the public that they did the right thing. The full question goes, The year is 2040. There have been riots in the streets of London after Britain has run out of petrol because of an oil crisis in the Middle East. Protesters have attacked public buildings. Several policemen have died. Consequently, the government has deployed the army to curb the protests. After two days, the protests have been stopped, but 25 protesters have been killed by the army. You are the Prime Minister. Write the script for a speech to be broadcast to the nation in which you explain why employing the army against violent protesters was the only option available to you, and one which was both necessary and moral. So they're not just saying, oh, well, have a think about what you would do in this situation, you know, what might be the best thing to do, and we'll assess you based on your ethical standpoint and your ability to make a great decision. They're actually saying, no, you have to do this. You have to basically uh, deploy the army, kill people of your own uh, nation, and then you have to go and demonstrate to everyone why that was a great thing for you to do. <laughs> now, obviously, the average person is not probably going to think that's a great thing to do. Maybe some people would. Maybe some people would think, well, it's so important that I can drive my car that it's okay if a few of my neighbours get killed. You know, most people would consider that murder. They would consider it unethical, unnecessary, and treacherous, really, to the rest of society. 
And this school in college is literally basically teaching, it would seem, that that's a good thing to their prospective students. And that comes from this paper here, General Paper 1, 2011. If we open it up here, you can see it's here. And if we just do a search for Prime Minister, there we go. And there it is. That's the question. There's all other, many other questions in here, different tests of intelligence and so on. But but that's that's it. It's in there. So what can we say about that? It's I mean, even I was shocked by that. I would never would have thought that something so blatant as this would be present in such a document. I knew that these sorts of groups operate in a way that is intended to create hierarchy and maintain power pyramids and so on. But I never would have expected to actually see this so blatantly laid out, even to a prospective student. Uh, I mean, I'm sure many students who don't necessarily know too much about Eden, who might be thinking about going there, seeing that would even question it themselves. Uh, so this brings me on to some of the background behind all of this, and I really, really recommend people go and check this stuff out. It's, it, you know, if every single person understood what I'm about to point you to, then the world would be a very different place. This is a post that I put up here two years ago, and it refers back to uh, a historian from Ivy League status sort of background in America in the 1960s, Carol Quigley, who, it's a kind of a long story, but the short version is he got access to secret documents from a secret society who asked him to write their history in an academic way. And at the end of producing a book for them, which basically contained secret documents that showed their criminality and how they'd been manufacturing democracy from behind the scenes and how democracy is basically fake. And people, billionaires, effectively families have been working together behind the scenes to make all of that happen. He wrote that book for them and then actually published it publicly, which he wasn't meant to do. And it's kind of an interesting story. But So that book is called Tragedy and Hope, The History of the World in Our Time. And it was published in the 60s and then pulled by Penguin Books after nine months. And you couldn't buy it. And it's such a massive book that very few people read it. And the most explosive material, after masses of pages of really dry material, is at the back. And it's not that big. So it took a long time for this information to percolate out into the wider world. And it actually got republished few years ago and i have it now and you can buy it yourself as well uh there's also another book uh, called tragedy and hope 101 which is available for free online by joe Plummer. it's linked in my post here which I'll, I'll link to in the show notes it's like a summarized version of the book so if you can't face reading a giant book which i don't blame you uh then you can check out joe Plummer's abridged version which yeah i mean it, it does a pretty good job of showing you how Groups behind the scenes have functioned for a long time. This is Cecil Rhodes. I won't go into all of it now, but the very short version is they operate out so out of Oxford University, grab a bit like Eden does, grab the sort of well most wealthy slash um, intelligent so-called people and induct them into their secret society and give them a super boost from behind the scenes using masses of wealth that was accumulated by Cecil Rhodes during the rape of Africa, basically the foundation of Rhodesia and so on, uh, which they took away and snuffled away a very long time ago now and and has been held since his death in basically a kind of trust that was intended to create effectively an Anglo-Saxon kind of master race. And this might all sound insane, and it is insane, but this is literally the history of our planet, as far as I can ascertain, and I've never seen this work debunked and it does all fit together as far as I can see. Also fits in with this video that I uploaded onto 3 Speaking YouTube uh, not so long ago, which is a presentation... Well, it's a description by a, a doctor uh, recorded in the 80s. It's on a cassette tape. And he was recounting a, a lecture that he went to in 1969 with many other doctors. And they didn't really know who was going to be speaking throughout the event. And it turned out that someone started speaking to them for quite a long time, basically giving them information about the future, saying this is what's going to happen in the next 30 years on planet Earth. And I'm part of a group who are making this happen from behind the scenes. And we're just telling you so that you can make good decisions now and make sure it all works out. And they proceeded to spell out what was going to happen in society on all kinds of levels, from clothing trends to legal changes to perceptual changes in people's psychology to science to so many different aspects of society. And by the time this tape was recorded in the 80s, a good percentage of what they predicted had come true. And by the time where we are now, uh, I'd say probably most of it's come true. So it's pretty clear that there are definitely groups behind the scenes operating in the shadows, uh, we are making plans for years and years and years in advance. And really, when Shakespeare said all the world's a stage, I think that was a bit more accurate than maybe was even realised back then. But um, yeah, so <laughs> 
what this is effectively showing from my perspective as a result of all of the work that I've done and things I've read and things I've looked into is it's just more and more evidence that characters, you know, such as Etonians, who do go on to run government, such as the British government and elsewhere, uh, literally are following a script which is intended to play out a uh, an agenda which ultimately, I mean, as far as we can tell from Carol Quigley, for example, is quite similar to Hitler's idea of Nazism, except that it's Anglo-Saxon white men instead of Nazi Germans, and it's not meant to be so obvious, and it's not meant to be so violent on the surface. Although it is very violent, but uh, it's not meant to be so militaristic and obvious, ultimately. And, and that's what we see when we look at the world's wealth and where it's held, the corporations and governments involved with that wealth and what they're doing with it. You know, They generally seem to be mostly starting wars on brown-skinned people that don't have nuclear weapons, funnily enough, and making steps to kind of dominate the planet as best they can as that group. And that's why when you see people, even from the Anglo-Saxon cult culture, challenge their position, those people generally get a decent ride. They don't get too abused until they push things too far and then they hit a brick wall and have problems. Whereas if, let's say, brown people, want, not wanting to generalise, but just, you know what I mean, people who are not Anglo-Saxon, who look significantly different to pink people, if they were to do something similar to what the challenges from the Anglo-Saxons uh, sometimes do to this group, they would be finding themselves in a much deeper hole a lot more quickly uh, and potentially even having their country attacked. So, yeah, who would have thought that a question on an exam for an entry into a school would lead us onto a thread that is so vast and disturbing, but that's where we're at. And you've only got to look at the politics of Britain with Boris Johnson and all these other characters. Uh, you know, they, they don't act in the in the public interest. They don't respond really to what the people want. They're just following an agenda. And really, they're, they're doing as much as they can to follow that agenda whilst at the same time not pushing it so far that the country revolts and kills them. That's basically what they're doing. They don't really care whether they're liked because they've already sold out and they know that in exchange for being incredibly wealthy and being able to do whatever they want and so on uh, in their private lives, they have to take some grief from the public now and then as a result of the incredibly unpopular things they do. So yeah, I do recommend you go and check this out for yourself and see for yourself that this is real. And definitely please do go and check out these other two links that I've posted under here. They're quite long. There's a lot of information there. But in reality, in my opinion, you're likely to learn more from six hours work in this material than you would do from 10 years of mainstream media material uh, or even probably university, to be honest, because they're not going like, to likely cover these things. You know, if you don't have all the puzzle pieces, if you've got a key puzzle piece missing, it doesn't really matter how many other pieces you've got, you're still not going to know what's going on, are you? So it's very important to source and find out these very well-hidden puzzle pieces if you can and uh, make sense of the world and improve life as a result. So as always, if you've enjoyed this information, if you've liked what I'm sharing with you here, then please do give me a like, a thumbs up, an upvote and a re-steam, a re-blog. Share it along to your friends. Hit the uh, notification bell on YouTube if you're watching on there. And until next time, peace.